Part 25 of my Figure Gaming Hobby series of videos will be covering how to create a Prussian army which can be used for as many sets of rules as possible. Normally the biggest problem when you look at rules is that different rules will use very different scales. So how can you possibly create a army that would work with one scale with another scale? Now surprisingly enough this actually is not a problem as large as we may originally think because you know in a set of rules such as WRG each figure represents 50 men in a set of rules um, such as the one I normally use where a figure represents 250 men basically everything gets scaled by a factor of five so in many ways you know what you're doing is instead of feeling battalions you're now feeling brigades or divisions when you finally decide that you want to create an army, in this particular case or becoming the Prussian army, the very first question that you may ask yourself is what figures should I purchase and how many should I purchase? There are three ways to answer this. You can recreate the entire army of a nationality you're interested in, assuming you know what set of rules you are using. This is a probably a not a good idea, but it's actually what I originally did with the Prussian army. The second method is to pick a battle and build up the forces based on the force mix used in the battle. The issue is sometimes the detail can be sketchy and even if not such as Waterloo, such as the Waterloo armies, you can, you know, can you use that particular force mix for another battle? I uh, thought about this uh, quite a bit and this is probably the direction I may consider with my Prussians but it's certainly not the direction I would recommend initially for someone building up an army for the very first time. The final method is to use an army list um, and the best one that I possess is the old WRG army lists which come in a separate book. DBN also has an army list which can be used but as DBN assumes, assumes each side has a force mix of 12 elements it's not going to help you if you want to try and use another set of rules but it's perfectly adequate for DBN. If they're the rules that you want to go down Go to the DBN army lists and base your force mixes based on that. Now the issue with a WRG is it's designed for a player to command no more than a core, if that. However, I personally feel if you can feel the core, when you play a set of rules, um, you can actually scale up everything and now field a division. So your Hussar regiment of three elements becomes three regiments of one element each. This uh, concept is not perfect, but it's certainly a good starting point. So if you use the WRG army list to create your force mix and you decide to use another set of rules where, let's say, a figure is worth 200 or 250 men each, then basically what you're fielding is something five times larger in terms of formations than you would with WRG. There are some rounding issues which we'll discuss. Now, one issue is, of course, uh, rounding up the full elements. Now, if you're using the WRG army list and you're basically fighting games where each figure represents 50 men, it's easy because the army list is designed to form elements. However, if you're going to do some strange scaling, then there could be an issue. And this is mainly an issue with troop types that do not scale up. So when you're dealing with, let's say, elite troops such as guards, always err on the side of the minimum forces because, you know, okay, 1805 or 1806, uh, sorry, 1808 or whatever it is, the uh, Prussians had foot guards. It was a particular size formation um, and WIG allows you to field 22 figures. However, if you're using a set of rules where each figure represents 250 men, uh, then your 22 elite figures drops down to about four or one element. So you need to always err on the lesser side. Saying that, there's no particular issue with having more foot guards than you need, because what we're talking about in the example I just used is that, um, okay, um, you get 20 elite foot guards for the Prussian army which represents five elements. You decide that you want to use a set of rules where the scale is five times greater, 250 men per scale, so it means you're only feeling one element. Well, you know, not a big issue. It means you've, you've wasted uh, three elements or four elements, which you can still use with WRG. And actually, there's a plethora of other sets of rules which use scales of around about 50 or 60 men per figure. 
so you can certainly use it for this. So it's not a major issue, but don't go overboard with, let's say, foot guards, for example. Yes, I agree, this is rather sloppy, but unless you want to spend your life researching and doing a lot of spreadsheet work and ratios and things of that nature, it's a good initial way to determine what kind of figures you should be purchasing. Using um, our WRG example, this is a possible infantry force mix, um, in this case covering the first half of the uh, forces. The high quality troops on the left will be used far less if you're going to scale, you know, to a high scale set of rules, such as, you know, 200 or 250 men per figure, but the numbers are low and as I've indicated before, it's not a major issue. Just one warning, which I'll deal with right at the end of the video, is the WRG army list for Prussia in particular is designed to allow you to field the Prussian army from the beginning or over the entire Napoleonic War, including the revolutionary period all the way up to 1815. So as a result, you know, in 1815, you're really not going to get any foot guards, guard yagers or grenadiers, for example. Um, so, you know, you may need to do some minimal research to determine what period you want to cover and uh, cut out the troop types that you're probably not going to be using very much indeed. We come to the second half of your uh, infantry army, and this is probably the bulk of your infantry army. Now, this shows all the Landwehr. Now, just another note, uh, because, once again, WRG is attempting to reflect uh, the entire Prussian army from, you know, go to woe, so to speak, uh, the uh, Prussians, let's say, in 1815, did not have uh, this much Landwehr compared to their standard line infantry. Uh, maybe they did in 1813, 1814, but certainly not in 1815. So, you know, maybe some rational um, sort of um, rounding will need to be done. But nonetheless, it's a, it's a good starting point. Uh, incidentally, the, um, the artillery that we've got there is the artillery that was normally allocated to the brigades, um, and this normally is six-pounder guns, and uh, typically each you know, core or whatever contained a single battery. Um, now, under WRG, you get one of these for each two battalions, so this is probably the maximum force of you know, at least six-pounder guns that you'll be feeling with your Prussians. This shows the um, cavalry. There is a minor issue, is what does a Landwehr cavalry represent? Um, in reality, it was really a medium cavalry, um, and even though it was armed with lances, it's not the same as Ulan's. So as a result, the um, Landwehr cavalry should be based three to a base. This also applies to the Dragoons and Cuirassiers, but uh, the Hussars and Ulan's uh, could skirmish, so I would normally abase them two per element. However, if you disagree, if you want your hussars to be more shock troops, uh, then put them three to a element. I generally find that um, good quality hussar figures uh, tend to be a bit too large to abase three to an element, but that's entirely a player choice. Uh, this shows you the kind of cavalry that you would be feeling. Just a couple of uh, notes. Um, the uh, Prussians didn't have cuirassiers in 1815, so maybe you'll need to swap them out with something else. They did have a reasonable amount of hussars, um, Ulans, and uh, of course a Landwehr cavalry. Um, again, another issue concerning the fact WRG is trying to span an enormous period for the Prussian army. I must admit, uh, in terms of artillery, WRG uses a rather confusing system. Peeling away the complexity, I assume each gun is a gun, ignoring the differences of howitzers for now, although I must admit the Prussians did field full batteries of howitzers, which if your scale is adequate, you may be fielding on the playing area. Um, however, if you're fielding a uh, force or playing a set of rules which uses WRG, then yes, uh, you will be fielding howitzers. But for the scale that I normally play, which is you know typically um, about 18 guns per figure, the howitzers simply get rounded out of existence. This is probably the maximum number of heavy guns, and for the uh, Prussians I'm assuming 12-pounders, 
uh, the horse artillery, of course, is six pounders that you would ever need to field. The army list uses a scale of one figure is a gun, which does not match the scale of the other troops WRG has in some way, so I'm not quite sure why this is the case. Um, it must be remembered that in WRG, the artillery base frontage is less than the frontage of other elements, so that's probably the reason why the scales sort of alter a little bit. Uh, we need to do a little bit of logical rounding up and or left, etc., to try and get some sort of you know, alignment if you're going to be playing another set of rules. So this is, you know, my suggested um, deployment of horse artillery. That is three elements. And of course, you're going to be including your limbers and no more than six elements of 12 pounder guns. Okay, going through the WRG and doing a little bit of, you know, ad hoc rounding down and a bit of logical um, selecting of elements, etc. We end up with about 133 elements. Um, Whatever rules you're using, once the element count goes over 50, the game tends to be too large. So you're never going to be using all 133 elements. Um, a, as a reasonable game should be 50 elements. So you can actually round this down if you wish. And on the right, I give you some an examples of um, what you can particularly round it down. So you could, if you wish, as an initial army, round everything down to 75 elements. Um, of which you'll probably only ever use 50 during a game. Now let's discuss the scale issue in a little bit more detail. Uh, while the army lists are designed for force mixes where the combat unit is a battalion, generals command divisions or brigades, and the CNC commands a corps, if you upscale, there's no reason why your combat units cannot change to a division, generals commanding corps, and CNCs commanding an entire army. As we've discussed before, the main issue is troops in small numbers, such as artillery or elite troops or yagas. One solution is to total the guns in the whole army to arrive at the number of elements and distribute as you wish. Thus, don't worry too much about, you know, that uh, there's one battery per core and if I round it down, it disappears. Just add up all your, oh, sorry, one battery per brigade. Just Add it all together and then round accordingly and get a number of pieces of artillery or elite troops or light skirmishes and then just distribute as you so wish. True, the individual uh, formations, let's say at brigade or divisional level, may not be 100% correct. But at the core level, they'll be reasonably correct and certainly at the full army level, you will actually have the correct, correct force mix. Now... To give you an example of a set of rules that uh, really scale massively is DBN. Now DBN actually removes most artillery, um, assuming it's built into the other elements. While I agree for DBN this is probably a viable strategy and is the alternative to the strategy of basically counting up all the guns uh, from the entire army, um, dividing and then just distributing the resulting elements. I tend to dislike this strategy because it basically assumes artillery density is identical in all armies. And this, you know, generally was not the case in particularly the early period of the war. Looking at DBN in more detail, this shows you the Prussian army list from 1815. You will notice the lack of high quality troops and troop types such as dragoons. However, this system does work and does give you a good game. The only issue is the army list is difficult to convert it to any other type of rules. One good thing about DBN is they do break up the Prussians in all the individual periods, which is really what you need to do with the WRG army list as well to get something a little bit more accurate. And probably one of the main reasons why when I first got into this hobby, I decided not to copy the WRG army list. I decided to go and basically recreate the entire Prussian army. Look, it's a wonderful project, and if you want to paint um, a thousand figures, um, feel free to do so. But um, basically, I've ended up with a Prussian army so large, I barely ever use the figures, um, and I just don't particularly like that idea anymore. I prefer to uh, create a 50 to 100 element force, British, French, etc., um, paint them up to a much higher level of quality and use that rather than try and recreate the entire army. But, you know, players may have different perspective on this particular issue. Okay, I did look at Empire 3rd Edition. It doesn't actually provide you with any meaningful army lists, but 
it does have a list of troop types and some characteristics and, and this kind of gives me my clue that uh, let's say Landwehr cavalry is actually medium cavalry even though it's uh, lance armed. As you can see here you've got mounted Yaga, uh, Ulans and Hussars which all have skirmish capability and as a result I feel they should be based two to a base. You'll see Landwehr and um, Dragoons and Cuirassiers which um, have you know, have, are either battle cavalry, so obviously they're going to be based um, to um, three to a figure, and Dragoon and Landwehr are not battle cavalry, but I still base them three again. As I said before, uh, particularly in my previous video concerning basing, uh, this whole how do you base cavalry is a little bit problematic for me, and um, you know, different rules seem to have a different solution to this. So, anyway, this is what I've based my. Uh, basic theory of basing on. If something is able to skirmish then it should be base 2. If it's not skirmish it's 3 to a base. And as for the battle cavalry I assume that's simply a modifier when it goes into close close um, combat. So your hussars, yes they can skirmish but they can also close to battle um, in a looser formation than let's say cuirassiers but they still have that special elan that gives it the ability to you know, get that battle cavalry modifier let's say. Okay, the final method uh, is to pick a battle and build your army based on the forces involved in the battle. This is an example of the Prussian army using a scale of 250 infantry per figure, 200 cavalry per figure and 18 guns per figure. The values seen here are the numbers of figures. This may be a bit hard to see, so let's drill down into a core and look at that in a little bit more detail. Here we see the first core. The artillery is all aggregated at core level. The Prussians field a battery of howitzer in each core, but because of the rounding, it does not show up here. I could change the rules setting to WRG, which uses a much lower scale, and it would show up there. The Feliciers are the Schutzen companies. For some reason, my database does not include the Schutzen company troop type, uh, something I'll have to correct later. If there is no value, it means only one figure is present, so you'll notice a single Felicier. The Jager in the 1st Brigade does not show up, once again due to rounding. Each brigade consists of about 5 elements of light infantry and 2-3 to three elements of Landwehr. To reflect the Schutzen company, I would round this up to the 1 figure to a full element for the 1st Brigade and round down the single element in the 3rd Brigade to nothing. Two brigades contain one Jager element and the fourth no light or skirmish elements. For the cavalry, a player would probably round up and down to obtain full elements as they desire. But the 1st Cavalry Brigade, for example, would consist of one element of Ulans, one element of Hussars, and one or two elements of Dragoons. I prefer using forces which actually met in battle, but uh, that only works if you're using a high-scale set of rules. You know, let's say 200 to 250 men per figure. At 50 men per figure, the WRG army list approach is the best. One note, the WRG army lists are not 100% accurate. I think I've mentioned that earlier before. I suspect this is because they're trying to represent the Prussian army over the entire Napoleonic Wars. I will uh, probably, I will almost certainly have to create specific army lists for the specific periods to avoid this issue. I also think some of the ratios are wrong as well, such as the WRG army list containing far too much Landwehr uh, compared to line infantry. But then I'm comparing uh, their army list with 1815, perhaps in 1812 or 1813, that Landwehr consistency or breakdown is correct. So, it comes to a close, my part 25 a player ideas video series. In this case, how to create a Prussian Napoleonic army using the WRG army lists as the core. I hope it will assist players who are thinking of getting into this hobby and do not know where to start, especially in terms of purchasing or what figures. It has taken me several decades to work out what I really need in a force mix rather than the 500 plus elements of Prussians I ended up painting and basing because I attempted to create the, recreate the entire Prussian army, which un unfortunately is not a normal thing that anyone should consider. Denken Sie daran, immer für Helle Heimatlungen zu kämpfen.